Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. With the proliferation and growing sophistication of cyber threat and attacks, there is a huge demand for cyber security professionals. This increased demand has worsened the long standing shortage of skilled professionals in the cyber security industry. Many people trying to make a career transition into cyber security are often not sure where to start their journey. Today, I will take you through the top 5 skills you need to start learning if you want to get into cyber security. If you are planning to make a career change to cyber security or you are new to the field, stick with me because this video is for you. There are so many articles and videos out there that sometimes make it even more confusing to kickstart your cyber security journey. Some people say you must first drown yourself in a laundry list of professional certifications. But my take is that certifications are not as important as relevant skills. Your skills and experience are the most critical tools in your arsenal. But if you're able to gather some certifications in course of acquiring those crucial skills, that makes a greater combination. On the job, what you can do matters much more than the certifications you have. Your ability to fix real issues and your trust and confidence of your team and leadership. So let's dive right in. Number one skill you should start learning is computer networking. This is the core aspect of IT and cybersecurity. Computer networking is about understanding how two or more computers connected to various networks exchange data electronically through a shared internet network and data is transported from point A to point B. Networking is the backbone of the internet. A strong foundation in networking will make you a superstar in managing and troubleshooting incidents. Two conceptual models govern communication function in networking, the TCP IP and OSI. The models group all networking and communication protocols into different categories called layers. TCP IP model was developed in 1970s and was funded by the US Department of Defense. TCP IP uses four layers, network access, internet, transport, and application layers. On the other hand, OSI is a newer model and stands for Open Systems Interconnection. It was developed by the International Organization for Standardization, ISO. OSI uses seven abstraction layers, physical, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layers. Simply put, the models provide a standard for different computer systems to be able to communicate with each other. Each layer handles a specific job and communicates with the layer above or below itself. The layers perform different functions but work together to let you access what page of a server hosted in a data center from your computer. Knowing what happens at each layer makes you more efficient in diagnosing incidents. I'm thinking of starting a series on computer networking, so add comment down below and let me know which concept you would like to learn first. Number two skill set you need is the operating systems and virtual machines. Virtual machines, also called VMs, are virtual emulation of computer systems that run on top of existing host OS. Each virtualized computer is called a guest and is managed by a software called hypervisor. The hypervisor helps you manage and allocate disk, memory, and CPU resources to each guest. Some of the most popular hypervisors are Hyper-V by Microsoft, EXSI and VMware Workstation by VMware. VirtualBox by Oracle and KVM. You need to have hands-on experience with various operating systems like Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. For Linux, you can focus on distros of your choice like Debian, Ubuntu, etc. Installing Kali Linux and using it responsibly is a good step into your cybersecurity journey. Kali is a Debian-derived Linux distro used for penetration testing, ethical hacking, and network security assessment. People sometimes argue which OS is better, but that doesn't really matter in my opinion. At the end, you need to be vast in all of them. The best way to learn to work with different OS is to build and play around with the VMs running various operating systems. Learn by doing. You can simply take a snapshot of your guest OS and play around with the VM. If it breaks, it's okay. You can restore the guest VM to an earlier state. VMs also give the flexibility to train and research in an isolated environment without impacting your host machine. Skill number three is systems administration. Systems administration involves configuring and maintaining computers running on various operating systems. It can be a personal machine or a high-powered server. If you use a smartphone or computer, you are already a system admin at some level. You can run different GET OS on test VMs 
and try to explore various settings on each system. Read online guides and manuals and tweak the machines. Systems administration is all about knowing your platform thoroughly and being able to support others. Try different things on your guest OS. For example, try to restrict access to the machine for specific source IP addresses. Permanently delete a few files and try to recover them. Push the limit of what you already know. In addition, learn the command line interface, also called CLI. The CLI, sometimes referred to as shell, is the most efficient way to interact with the operating system. The important part of the OS that controls all tasks on the system is called the kernel, while the interface that is exposed to users is called the shell. The command line gives you the lowest level of access to software functions bundled in the OS. Many of the most valuable tools you need don't have graphical user interface to point and click. So learning the command line will afford you much flexibility and let you achieve more for less. It lets you use scripting and automation to perform repetitive tasks that will otherwise require a lot of time to complete. Learning the command line and automating your workflow will bring tremendous value to your team and make you a valuable asset. I recommend starting off with Bash since it comes by default with most of the Linux distros. Mac OS also used it in Terminal App but has since replaced Bash with a similar but more feature-packed shell called Zish. Bash is so effective and popular that Microsoft released Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL, and lets you run many different Linux flavors to use Bash as native app. This is convenient since you can access most of your Linux tools without having to switch to a Linux VM. Linux is arguably the most important OS for cybersecurity since most cybersecurity tools run on Linux but you should be comfortable working with other OS as well. Keep in mind that PowerShell is the default native shell for Windows. Its syntax is different from that of Bash, but PowerShell gives you extensive Windows admin capabilities. So if you work in a team where Windows is the main OS, I recommend you learn PowerShell as well. Keep pushing the limits and learn something new each day, and you will be a superstar in no time. Skill number four is computer programming. Not all cybersecurity professionals possess coding skills, but having zero coding skills will limit your industry growth and opportunities. You don't have to be an expert in programming. You don't have to be able to develop a full-scale application, but you need to understand basic concepts because you'll be working with different tools and you should be able to understand the script you use for your work. Whether you are red teaming or defending against attack in a blue team, you need some level of programming skill. Understanding how to approach a problem from programmatic mindset is extremely useful in cybersecurity. I recommend starting out with Python. Python is a high-level object-oriented language. Its syntax is easy to learn, making coding and debugging of the program relatively easy. Since there is no compilation step, editing, testing, and debugging cycle is incredibly fast. Python has become very popular among cybersecurity professionals. If you are going to focus on application security in the future, learning JavaScript or PHP will help you identify and defend against web application attacks such as cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery. In cybersecurity, you should not just lock in on single language. Learn Python first and add on one or more languages along the way. Scale number five is cloud security. To put it in the most simple way, often, when you hear the term cloud, it usually means thousands or millions of VMs running on specialized hypervisors on a provider server farm in a data center somewhere. But let's face it, can you secure a system you are not familiar with? I guess your answer is no. So it will help if you learn how compute services and cloud infrastructure function. I would recommend you start your public cloud journey with AWS or Azure or both because they have the largest market share at the moment, and then learn GCP. Gartner has consistently ranked AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google GCP as leaders in their magic quadrant for public cloud providers. There is a huge demand for professionals who have AWS, Azure, or GCP skills. Cloud adoption is accelerating as more organizations move their workload to public cloud, so demand for professionals in this field will continue to grow. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and hit the like button.
If you have any questions, please add them to the comment section below. See you soon.